Hello, and welcome back to Joomla Development 101. In this lecture, we are going to continue our plugin creation and specifically be looking at the main PHP file located within the plugin package. There are a couple of key concepts that we want to keep in mind while creating this file and our plugin. First of all, this main PHP file should be named by the plugin name. The reason this is important is because this is the entry point for the trigger. This is the file that Joomla is going to look for when trying to run your plugin. Secondly, in most core plugins, as well as third-party plugins, the trigger word, so for example, on content before display, on content after render, the trigger is usually defined within this main PHP file. And it's important to note that this file always or should always extend jplugin. So any proper plugin should be extending jplugin. So let's get into writing the code. I'm going to open my IDE and we're going to look at the linkprotect.php file which we created in the last lecture. Remember we just created a dummy placeholder at this point. So we're going to need at this point to begin filling this file out with the information that Joomla requires. Typically the first thing that I will add in to any file will be the file header. This allows me to define a package, subpackage, copyright, and licensing for my plugin. The first line of code that we'll create will be similar to every Joomla extension where we create a jexec or a die. This line simply ensures for security purposes that the code is not run unless I'm within the Joomla environment. Next I'll define my class. The class name is quite important as it will define first of all that it's a plugin, second of all what group the plugin is within, and lastly what the name of the plugin is. You'll notice that all classes extend jplugin. I'm going to go ahead and add a little header block at the top of this to define a little bit more what it is so that I can remember in the future easily. And I can also add an at since tag if I choose to and define this to be 3.0. Now that I've defined the class, the first function I'm going to want to add is going to be the constructor function. Now, because I am extending jplugin, my constructor function must follow the same parameters and hold the same attributes as the original jplugin constructor. The first thing I want to do within my constructor function is going to be to run the parent constructor. This ensures that I don't forget or ignore anything that is run first of all by jplugin before writing my own. The next bit that I'm going to want to do is to require the helper class. Remember that we have defined the helper.php file within the helper folder. Here we're going to want to define that so that we can use that throughout our code. Next, I'm going to do a couple of things here because I know what I'm going to want to include later. First, I'm going to define my helper or instantiate that helper class and pass in the params from the plugin. So it's important to note this params, because my class content link protect is extending J plugin. I have access to a this params object which contains all of the parameters that we defined previously in our XML file. So for example, in this plugin we have two fields, warning page and new window. This params will be an object that contains those fields and values as they have been stored in the administration panel. 
Now let's look at the function that we're going to want to write. We're going to need a public function and as mentioned we're going to use the on content before display trigger. The on content before display trigger has several parameters that are passed into it. Those being context, article, and params. And we can look at each of those in turn. One thing that's helpful to do is to make sure that we accurately define or write our doc block for the function. So what is the purpose of this function? This function will initiate the plugin. Then I'm going to define each of the params that I'm passing in. So context is actually going to be a string and the description for context is the context of the content passed to the plugin. So, for example, I will show you exactly what that means a little bit later inside the function, but in essence, basically, it's a string defining the location from where this trigger or plugin has been triggered from. Next, I'm going to want to look at the article, which is an object. More specifically, it is a J object, which contains the article. The last one, params, is also an object, and this contains the article params. It's important to note that the article params are different from the plugin params, and this is because the context will define those parameters. Lastly, what we're going to want to do is define what the return from this function is going to be. So we're going to tell it that we want to return a boolean value and we'll say that it's true if the function is bypassed else true or false based on the replacement action. So what does that mean if the function is bypassed? Well as we, get, we begin to write the code what we're going to look at are the parts of the context. And the context is actually going to be concatenated on a period. So if we explode the context on the period, what we can then do is check to see if the first part of our context is equal to com content. If it's not equal to com content, what we're going to want to do is to return true, or simply return. This means that the function won't be run if we're not within the correct context of the com content. Because remember that this plugin is going to be triggered on content items. This is basically a failsafe to make sure that it's not run anywhere it's not supposed to be. The next thing we'll want to do is to check for a keyword so that if the users want to manually override and not let the plugin run, they can define a keyword within the article text. So let's do a quick search of the article text for a keyword and let's use curly brace link protect equal off. So if the user enters link protect equal off within the content, we don't want to run our plugin. So if that exists anywhere in the text, what we need to do still is to replace the text and we'll look for that keyword which we know exists because we just checked for it and we'll replace that with an empty string and we'll just define that on the article text. So because we're passing things by reference, this automatically updates and removes that trigger word or that keyword that they've placed in the body of their content. Now, we're in a position where we can begin more functionality of our plugin knowing that we are in the correct context and the user does not want to skip our plugin. 
So the first thing that we'll want to do is to define our application. And we want to do this so that we can then call the input variables. Because with Joomla 3, we no longer want to use jRequest. Instead, we want to use app input get. Specifically in this case, I'm going to be looking for the external variable. If they're on that page and ready to leave the site, I don't want to do a link replacement. Instead, what I want to do is let them leave the site. So I'm going to use my helper file and I'm going to pass into leave site function both the article and the external URL which I'm defining in my URL string. The other option is if there's not an external link. In the case where there's not an external link we need to define our pattern and here we're going to use a regular expression. Now, regular expressions are not scary. They may feel scary and they may look confusing, but once you get the hang of them, they're extremely powerful ways of searching content, doing find and replace, and much more. So I'm going to use a regular expression pattern that I'm already familiar with that I have predefined. And what I'm going to do is look through my article text and use the preg replace callback with this pattern. And here's where it gets interesting. I'm actually going to use this callback function on article text. But we have not yet defined this callback function. There is no callback function within this object. So what I need to do is first declare a variable that can be used throughout this class. Next, I need to instantiate that variable with some value. So I'm going to set this callback function equal to an array with the helper file and the function that I want to run, replace links. Now this is a handy way of doing things where I want to have my helper file control the function that I'm going to call from my replacement. If I wanted to do something within the same file where I set public function replace links and I did that work right here, I would simply put replace links in place of this callback function. But because I want to keep my code clean in this file, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use this class level variable callback function which passes the helper and the function within that helper where I want the work to actually be processed. So at this point, we've looked through the majority of the link protect.php file. We've defined the construction. We've also defined the initial trigger location on content before display. In the next section, we'll begin looking at that helper file and looking more in detail of the actual workings of how we're going to do the replacement or allowing them to leave the site and some of the more detailed work.